talked a little bit of um, what the problems are and how it shouldn't be. And it's a lot more easy to criticize than to do things right. Um, so I'll talk a little bit now about how things should be. Because one of the first things is indeed to get a healthy balance between the amount of yeah, uh, time and energy your ego receives compared to how much your spirit receives. As I said, it should be roughly 50-50. Uh, so our present day system of uh, most of our time being consumed by work, which is generally not spiritual in nature, and then lots of our other times being yeah, consumed by uh, activities where there's a lot of um, social pressure to perform in a very specific manner. Um, so doing your administration, um, attend specific social functions where you have to behave in that way or in such a way are not really helpful. They should be diminished uh, time-wise, energy-wise, attention-wise to be brought back under the 50% threshold. So we should work, yes, but maybe 24 hours a week, something like this, 20 hours, and then we will have a lot of time for reading, for um, thinking, philosophizing, uh, working artistically, um, praying, and other spiritual development exercises. So, should we not work? No, of course, we need to survive. But our work should be so efficient that with relatively s small investment of time, we can generate enough for ourselves. And given the advances made by technology, and how more and more things can be automated, this is not actually a problem for the world. The problem is that it's not being um, allowed by our uh, economical system. So there's a blockage there, but it's quite possible for people to get by with working two or three days a week and supplying for themselves or even their families because we don't actually need that much and of course you need food you need shelter um, and you need something which empowers you uh, so it is nice to be able to communicate and to travel um, these are already in a way luxuries but also very good and healthy for your development also the opportunity to be creative whether this is in a digital media or in a physical media whether you're a sculptor or a, a graphic artist but also when we are working with the process of creation we can access these higher worlds and allow these impulses these inspirations to take form and we should also stimulate and support all these people who are doing this all these artists are in a way bringing new impulses to our world. So art needs to become a much bigger part of our both individual lives but also collectively as society it needs to become more appreciated, people need to be more supported. And if we're looking at numbers to make it more concrete then roughly about a fifth of people should be in the art, uh, science or uh, spirituality yeah, business, it should be their profession, it should be their focus, their main activity in life. And it's a healthy activity for everyone. So then we come to the next layer, our leadership. One of the biggest problems is if you have a leader who is afraid. When we are afraid or when we're in some other low vibration, we attract that vibration and we also attract that vibration as our source of inspiration. So if I'm the king of a country and I'm afraid of losing that country, of being conquered or there being a revolution or a famine or whatnot, then because of my fear, 
I will attract things which are also from a very low dimension, from a very low cosmos. So what we would call demonic beings, demonic spirits. And these spirits will around will become a cloud around me and they will be become my world. So my fear will not become less. The fear will become my world and it will inspire me. And I will start making all kinds of laws and arrangements based on fear. And these are arrangements which will all ultimately also lower the vibration of the rest of the country. So if we have leaders who are in a state of fear, this is very, very, very bad for society. And unfortunately much of our leadership, both political but also economical, is in a state of stress, in a state of fear. So leaders themselves should feel safe, uh, should feel relaxed, should feel comfortable, should have the opportunity also to uh, relax instead of being crushed by a job load which allows their egos to overwhelm them. So our leadership should go, should be roughly on holiday half of the time, you could say. Because they need to be relaxed, they need to be stress-free, they need to be imaginative, uh, they need to be inspired to be able to function as good leaders. So we're not taking very good care of our leaders, you could say, and because of that we're also getting bad quality of leadership. And instead of leaders who listen to us and pay attention to us and um, allow us also freedom, they do not trust us. They see the people they govern as threats, as problems to be managed. So leadership is also a very big issue, a very big problem in society. Leadership, leaders we don't need as much as we need um, yeah, people who generate uh, art and um, other higher impulses to stimulate us. So leadership could easily be reduced to about 10%. Um, then we have the social caste. Social caste is currently the dominant caste, uh, numbers wise. And that is okay as long as they would also import some of these higher impulses. It's simply where humanity is at. And it's a good thing that in a way from being a pyramid like this, now the bulge is already moving upward a bit. So. The amount of Pariya and Sudra caste people is yeah, reducing and the amount of social caste people is increasing if you look at it in yeah, fractions. So these people are in a way uh, in control, which is fine, but they should adopt these higher impulses. They should listen to the right leaders, choose the right leaders. Um, take good care of their leaders and also accept the knowledge and the impulses of these higher powers instead of creating an economical and social competitive system which is ultimately harmful to the planet, to themselves. And the only way to do that is to get rid of our compet competitive instincts which are harming us and others. So right now it is a race to the bottom. Like if you have two companies competing and one of them is willing to horribly exploit their employees and to cut safety measures uh, in half and just get rid of everybody who's unhappy or uh, has been in an accident or is sick and the other company is nice and social. What happens? The evil company will grow, will win, will get more investments because people will see that, okay, they have a larger profit margin. Ta-da! Let's choose that. So, by being focused on yeah, economical competition, 
we're in a way engaged in a race to the bottom, how to be as evil, as corrupt, as sociopathic as possible, and the biggest sociopath wins. So, as my dad likes to say, even if you win the rat race, you're still a rat. So we should stop this system, and ultimately the reward uh, system should not be rewarding um, such activities, but it is, and hence we are amazed why is there so much corruption, why is so much tax evasion? Well, the system is forcing us into it, it is rewarding that behavior. Ultimately what we should do is to reward things which create a good opportunity for people to develop themselves. So, like initiatives like Google's 10% time, where employees are given 10% of their time and the resources of the company to do whatever they like. So they're empowered in following their own path. So things like this should happen much, much more. And companies who do this should be the leading companies rather than the more well, companies which tend to squeeze people. <laughs> But how will this work? Well, not with our current economical system, which is just rewarding uh, efficiency. Um, what we should reward, a company should make money depending on the quality of, uh, of the labor. How good is the workplace? If it is a great workplace, everybody is developing well, everybody is growing well, everybody is healthy and stress-free. That company should make a lot of money, the, those leaders should be rewarded and those employees should be, in a way, yeah, happy with their lives. <laughs> Instead of struggling to um, sacrifice their personal lives to make the next step on the ladder. So people need to be content with where they are, not always looking for promotion, looking for more money, looking for more power. But that's a difficult thing because it is in the spirit of most people. But yeah, if our spirits keep on being focused on that Atlantic impulse of gaining more money, gaining more power and also playing both sides against the middle, and get gaining power through conflict, through fights, through opposition, um, then our method of spiritual development is dooming our society. So ultimately we have to alter the nature of our spirits. And this is also why we're here, why we are in this crisis, why we are having these problems. Because higher powers are trying to help humanity to get out of this power crazy competitiveness which is within our spirit and which is destroying our planet and our lives. So I hope many people will be willing to accept the guidance we are receiving through our prayers, through our rituals, through our meditations from the higher world in altering our own individual spirits. And by if enough people alter their own spirit also, society will have an opportunity to change. Then finally, we come to, um, yeah, you could say the bottom layers of our society, uh, the workers and the uh, non-workers. Ultimately, the non-workers have to find a niche, have to find a way to contribute. Um, so it is no use being a thief or a drug addict or something like this. They have to be yeah, led so they can find a way they can participate in society in a healthy manner, in a contributive manner. So that uh, behavior should not be condoned. And many people will say that yes, but I'm just experiencing, I'm just exploring and la 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 la. And they will imagine themselves to be of the, the, the artist caste or of the, uh, the priest and scientist caste. But ultimately you have to look at it 
what are they producing, what are they doing for the world. And you have to look a little bit at least at their effectiveness and if they're just sitting around philosophizing with a joint in their hands and nothing is ever produced, is ever shared, is ever manifested, well then maybe you're not a scientist or a philosopher, you're just a paria, a useless person, a parasite. But it is hard to judge because what is useful and what is just experimentation or it's not always clear. Like I've spent lots of time watching movies and playing games ultimately to gain some interesting insights which I can now share with others. So hard to judge but I think people should at least try to be honest with themselves and also look at the higher worlds. How are they being judged? Because sometimes the higher worlds will just tell me that I'm wasting my time and I'm just wasting my talents or that it is okay for me to relax and to play around and to de-stress and that it will actually be helpful to de-stress and to open up and to uh, free my mind that way. So the worker caste is of course very very necessary but also the worker caste should start incorporating higher impulses such as wisdom, such as morality, such as a sense of um, community, society, um, um, to become a little bit more open-hearted because the power center in a way evolves from going from the lowest chakras more and more into the higher chakras. So as a worker the lower centers are very strong, they're very dominant and we have a strong willpower, we are very practical, we can get things done. So when it, we move into the social caste it becomes more around the heart, the stomach, the throat, this area and there it becomes very much about using your connection, using your sensitivity. Um, when we move into the warrior caste there's a kind of a split so part of the energy goes up into learning to communicate clearly having a clear vision and the other energy moves down again to becoming very practical so you could say that in a way moving into a leadership position you're also partially moving back into a worker position and in a way you have, um, as a, you could say, um, a leader, you have a split where your, in a way, energy centers are split while they were in one place in the social and in the worker caste. And you have a similar split but then slightly higher if you move into the uh, uh, priest caste where you're working with your heart and with your crown chakras, with your inspiration. So observing your energy body and trying to put it in the right state for your caste. It's also very important to try to balance your energy centers through meditation and through exercise. So I hope that this will help you to be healthier, more balanced yourself and that this way you can also inspire people around you and society. Good luck out there. We need you.